All right, I hope you all like that quick animation. It gives you a rough idea how different parameters affect the uh, Kriging interpolation and ordinary Kriging to be specific. But I thought about maybe let's not stop at the animation uh, level only. What if someone wants to try a combination of two different parameters and see, let's say, if you increase the nugget and increase the uh, number of discretization points, how is that going to affect the model? So in the animation, I'm fixing parameters and I'm changing one at a time, going through different like values and showing you how that affects the uh, interpolation. But what if you want to try change two things at the same time? What if you want to see uh, how two parameters are going to affect the interpolation? So that idea um, I thought about creating uh, maybe this tool that I called Sandbox, Kriging Sandbox, in which I'm not sure, by the way, I'm not sure if there is a tool like this out there, so I didn't look into that, to be honest. There might be something that is similar to this one, but if not, it's just a tool that will help you learn I know it's just 2D, but it's the same thing or almost the same thing that's going to happen in 3D. Like most of these, these parameters are going to uh, affect the interpolation the same way in a 3D, uh, let's say, block model if you are into mining. And um, also, uh, this one is really simple. So, and the other thing that I forgot to mention here is that there is another really important thing, which is the variogram. Uh, it's like, you can change that, and of course it's going to change a lot in the interpolation, but in this case it's hard-coded, but we're going to see only how these different, um, you know, Kriging parameters are going to affect the interpolation, and maybe if you guys are interested, we can also add... Like, um, you can also play around with the variography in this tool if you're interested. Um, yeah, so how does this one work? Basically, as you can see, there are three tabs. We've got the truth, the sample, the Kriging, and the GT curve. Um, so you start with the parameters for uh, a simple simulation that is going to create a truth model for you. And then you're going to create some samples, whether you want some regular spacing on some random points. We define them here. And then we use these samples in the Kriging or the ordinary Kriging interpolation. And you can change all of these parameters and you can see how it's going to affect the interpolation. So we're going to take an example here. So we're going to stick to these parameters. We're going to use a seed is basically for the same parameters. If you change the seed, basically it's going to change that random path of that uh, uh, simulation and then it's going to create a different simulation for you. So in this case, we're going to start with 42, but in this one you can put in whatever number that you want and it's going to change a different simulation, uh, create a different simulation for you. So the seed is good in case you want to um, keep that same, uh, maybe two people have the same software and they want to see the same uh, truth model. If they both put the same seed and use the same parameters, it's going to generate the same model for them. It's not going to be random, like really ra random every time you, you generate this one if there is a seed. That's basically, if you're familiar with Python, it's the same thing. So the azimuth is basically that orientation of the the grade so it's going to be mostly on that like 45 azimuth there so the range you can play around with the rate uh, with different ranges here and you can see that these structures are going to be like uh, small or big based on these ranges that you define the cell is basically you want to see like small cells or uh, big cells so of course the, the smaller the cells, the longer it's going to take, but by default, it's set to 10 by 10. So let's go and create a truth model. And it will take a few seconds, let's say, uh, hopefully based, of course, based on, like I said, on the number of cells that you've uh, chosen to use. And of course, your computer, because it's basically going to use some processing power in the background. So 
Um, once this one is going to generate that truth model, by the way, you cannot start from the bottom up because obviously you need a truth model to generate some or to do some sampling here. And then, of course, you need these samples to run the Krigging. So you need to start uh, from the top going to the bottom here. So this is basically going to be our truth model. So um, you can see here the, the variable is called AU, but that's basically, um, yeah, I forgot to code it as grade, but it could be anything. So these are not like real grades, but you can see basically where it is red, these are supposed to be high grades and these areas are probably waste. Anyway, so this is our truth model. The next thing what we would like to do is samples. You can see it's empty, but we can start with some regular spacing, um, 200 meters, let's say, or 200 feet or whatever is this uh, uh, unit of this grid. So let's go and create these samples. So basically it's going to sample like at these locations from the truth model. So I can maybe decrease this one to like 50, and you can see now it's creating like um, um, less spaced or like a, um, a shorter spacing between the different uh, samples there. So I can set it to maybe to 10 and you can see that it starts to resemble to our truth model. And maybe even the Kriging is going to generate almost the, the same as the, the truth model. So. Um, so let's go and stick to 200 maybe, that's the regular spacing, and let's see what these random points is going to do. Let's start with one. One is basically going to add just one random point, and I think it is this one here. So let's go and add maybe, I don't know, like 50. So this is going to add 50 random points, and maybe we can do like 100 and see how that looks. So let's do 200 regular spacing. Uh, that's basically the spacing and this is the number of points 200 random points So let's say that this is good And then what I can do now is I can jump to the Krigging and I'm gonna go and uh, click on this by the way I'm using a point one um, for the nugget and This is basically 10% uh, I'm using zero as the azimuth for now. I'm using these ranges. I'm using uh, a minimum of four uh, samples for the estimation and a maximum of 25. The search radius, I set this to, to 1000 so I can uh, like uh, I can estimate the, the whole uh, grid. It's not going to be some unestimated points. Uh, for now, I'm going to stick with these one with uh, the discretization one and one. The cell size is going to be 10 and 10. And this is basically for the color bins. So basically, it's going to apply these. Uh, for each one of these values, it's going to apply a color. So you can play around with this one if you want to see like things that are above a certain cutoff or something like that. So let's go and run the Krigging and see how that works. And it should take just a few seconds. And there you go. So this is, you're going to see here the Krigging variance uh, on the side. And this is the Krigging. And now we can play around with different things. So uh, let's go and try to remove this one and update it. And you can see it without these different. Uh, so this is going to create some uh, continuous colors and this is how it looks and this is how it looks here because we didn't use any azimuth. And let's now see if I use a 45 degrees azimuth, azimuth matching that same orientation. And you can see now this one is going to be um, the same and you can see that the orientation uh, matters. Um, the other thing that I can do is um, we can also change this one to, let's say, um, let's do like 100. And let's see how this one going to work. And you can see that there are some areas in which we don't have a lot of samples that was not estimated. So we can do maybe 50. So this is basically the same thing that you do in your favorite uh, software. This is could be like your first pass in which you are um, you're defining a really small search um, 
uh, range and then these are going to be like the blocks that were estimated in your first pass and then you try to increase the range and then estimate other blocks and then maybe use that for classification or something um, so now we can play around with different parameters so I'm going to set this to one back to 1000 and I'm going to set different uh, values here 0.1 let's do 0.5 one, two, five, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, and let's do eighty. Okay, so I just want to see like this one. It doesn't look that good, so maybe we can add something here. Um, we can do six seven do here uh, 12 and 15 let's see how that looks yeah a little bit uh, better but you can try now for example the effect how like a high nugget is going to affect the estimation you can see that it's like smoothing the, the estimation there so maybe we can try with let's say if we do like a min and a max of one what do you think that this is going to look like maybe pause the video and think about it for a second see if you know what's going to happen and let's update this and there you go it looks like a nearest neighbor estimation now so the other thing that you can also check is this uh, grade tonnage curve. So you can change the parameters. So you can do like maybe, um, maybe a, I don't know, like let's try a different orientation and see if that's going to affect the tonnage gr grade uh, curve. Not that much. Maybe let's increase the range to 200. I'm not sure if it's my eyes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, because now we're using um, now each one of these points or each one of these cells, it's going to be basically assigned the value from the nearest um, uh, sample. So it's not going to change anything. So let's take this back to four and twenty five and then things are going to change here for sure. So let's go and see. Let's say, for example, forty five degrees. Yeah, that changed there. So let's decrease this one to 100. And that's going to change also. So you can play around with uh, uh, this value here. And it's going to change. Let's maybe increase the cell size. This is going to be like your uh, block model, uh, like the block sizes, if that's going to change or not. So you can see like how these different parameters is going to affect your your estimation you can check also the Kriegen variance here and also you have the uh, the, the great tonnage uh, curve so yeah so it's it's a great tool to learn about uh, the Kriegen parameters and how sensitive is the ordinary Kriegen to these different parameters and yeah if you like this tool um uh, you can download it for free of course i'm gonna link the um the download link in the description below you can get it it is also available to my patreons uh who've been supporting this channel and thank you guys for supporting this channel and with that being said see you in the next video Show you all the things that you might have missed